Hey, I really appreciate you guys using your truck to let me borrow the church's analog console so I can practice at home. Stop! 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 Ooh! 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 The church has insurance, right? So you want to practice live mixing at home, but you don't want to haul home that analog console. And I don't blame you, me neither. So if you're not going to do that, what software should you use? Today I'm going to be reviewing Harrison Mixbus as a way to practice mixing tracks at home. I've got another review coming on how you can use it as a live broadcast mixer, and I'll put that link down in the description below. First, let's talk about what sets this console apart from all the competition, and that it looks exactly like an analog console. Now, don't get me wrong, I love digital consoles, and all the flexibility you get is great. But there's something really satisfying about an analog console, about being able to just reach for what you want to turn, it's right there where you want it to be, and one knob does one function. There's no layers, there's no menus, there's no buttons to press before you can grab what you want. It's all right there where you want it. And that's what I really love about this digital audio workstation. Right there in the top layer, it's got all your routing for buses and groups. It's got the built-in EQ and the built-in compressor all right where you need it. There's no mystery routing, there's no hidden layers, it's all right there on top. So if you learned to mix on an analog console, you're gonna pick this up in no time. But even if your digital console at church isn't the exact same as this, the way that the concepts apply from this digital audio workstation back to your mixer at church, it's gonna help you be a better mixer because you've learned what the tools do and what you're listening for when you're mixing. I mean, eventually, your console's gonna give up the ghost and you're gonna have to get a new one. And the only thing you take with you is your mixing skills, not necessarily exactly what you learned to do on that particular console. The other thing that sets Mixbus apart is that the mix buses are all built in. You don't have to create something new and route to it to make it work. You just click on the corresponding button, you can even name it if you want, and you're good to go. Now, before we talk about the details of the EQ and compression, let's talk about the two different versions of Mixbus. There's Mixbus, which I kind of call Mixbus Vanilla, and there's Mixbus 32C, which is the premium version. On Mixbus, it comes with a three-band semi-parametric EQ, where the middle band is a bell curve and the top and bottom are shelves. On Mixbus 32C, you get four bands of EQ, with the top and the bottom switchable between shelves and peaking EQ. Now, another primary difference between Mixbus and Mixbus 32C is that in Mixbus you get eight groups, and in Mixbus 32C you get 12. Now, there are more features that you get when you upgrade to 32C, but that's beyond the scope of this review for today. The built-in channel EQ doesn't have a graph, and for learning purposes, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. The good thing is that you're not tricked into looking at the EQ graph and thinking that it sounds good. You actually have to use your ears, which no one else in the congregation can look at the EQ graph. They just have to use their ears, so why shouldn't you? However, some visual learners are really helped by having a graph when you're starting out, so you can see how wide or how many frequencies on either side of the boost or cut are being affected. Each band has a knob for gain and frequency. The bandwidth control is automatic, so it automatically gets wider the more that you boost or cut, but it stays narrow right at first. There are very few numbers around the knobs, which makes it great for the graphical interface, but you can still see what value you have on the channel's scribble strip. Now, if you're practicing with just three bands of EQ, you might think that that's holding you back, but actually this limitation forces you to get a little more creative for getting the sound that you want with only having those three bands to play with. Now, it does come with included plugins that have more of a fully parametric style EQ if you want to practice that way as well. But I personally like trying to do things that are a little bit harder so that it makes me work more in order to get a better result. Another feature that's right on the front of the control surface is the built-in compressor. Again, it's very simple, but it can get you reps on hearing what compression is doing and isolates just a few parameters that you can change at a time. There are three different types that you can choose from, a leveler, a compressor, and a limiter. And with each one, they only give you one other parameter to play with aside from the threshold and the makeup gain. Right beside the channel fader is the threshold control and the gain reduction meter. Pull down on this little handle and you'll lower the threshold, increasing the amount of compression that you're getting. As you start to turn the signal down, the little red lights light up, so it becomes really easy to see if something's compressing a lot or a little just by glancing at the channel. 
Right at the top, there's the makeup gain. So after you've brought down a lot of gain reduction, you can keep your fader from being all the way at the top by turning up the makeup gain just a little bit. I like to set it so that my fader hangs around zero. The leveler is really great for signals that are very dynamic, like maybe that singer that goes from whisper quiet to really loud all in one second. Yeah, I know that person too. The setting has a very low ratio and a fixed release time, but you get to play with the attack time. If you set the attack time really fast, you can get a whole lot of dynamic range reduction without it feeling like it's compressing or pumping. The compressor mode has a fixed attack and release time, but you get to select the ratio. The limiter mode has a high ratio and a nearly instant attack, but you get to choose the release time. Using these different modes and allowing you only control of one other variable at a time really lets you dial in exactly what that variable is doing. So without having 10,000 options of what you can do with a fully parametric compressor with RMS and peak mode and attack and release times and knees and all these things, you can really dial in what each thing is doing. That way, when you go back to having all those controls, you can have a better idea of what each one of them is doing because you put that limitation on yourself to try to figure it out. As a mixing tool and as a learning tool, I'd give it a 10 out of 10. Up at the top of the channel strip, you've got your routing section. So if you want to add a plugin, this is where you would do it. Or if you want to put your EQ before your compressor or your EQ after your compressor, you can see what that's like just by dragging and dropping the different modules. If you want to add a plugin, just right click here and say add plugin. Now it does allow you to add plugins post fader, but that might get confusing for you. So try to keep all of them red or above the fader. Now, one of the features that I love the most and helps you get set up the quickest is the way that the buses are routed. Want to add a reverb? Click the button to assign that channel to that bus, load a reverb plugin on that bus, set the mix to 100% and you've got a reverb send in return, just like that. The other cool thing is when you rename the mix bus, it changes the name on all the input sends as well, and that is super helpful. It keeps you in the mixing brain rather than in the thinking brain. Now, like I mentioned before, it does come bundled with some free plugins to get you started. Now, I bought the vanilla version, with my own money, I might add, and it came with some great EQ, compression, pitch shifter, reverb, and delay plugins, and some other stuff that could be really fun to play with, but doesn't really translate well going back to your live console. For a beginner, I wouldn't even worry about the plugins, except maybe the reverb and delay. If you're trying out some more advanced mixing techniques, the bundle plugins could be all you need. Now, when you're setting up your session and importing the tracks, it can be really helpful to make the channel order match what you've got on your console back at church. Here's a pro tip to make import easy. Go ahead and rename all the audio files with the number in front of the channel name. So kick would be 01 kick and snare would be 02 snare. This is going to put it in order so you don't have to drag tracks around after you import them. The thing that I love about Mixbus is that everything's up and ready to go all the time, but that can actually eat up a lot of DSP. So it's hard for me to know whether your computer is going to be able to run it or not. But they thought all this through and they went ahead and allocated all the DSP that they need for all the functions that you've got running all the time. So even though it uses more DSP right off the bat, it's using all that it's going to use as a program. If you're curious about whether it'll run on your computer, they do have a demo version that mutes the audio every once in a while, but other than that, it's fully functional. So whether or not your 2015 MacBook Air can handle it, who knows? Now, there are a ton of other features on Mixbus that I talk about when I go into how to use it as a broadcast mixer. But as far as getting set up and starting mixing quickly and getting a mix done really fast, I don't think there's a better digital audio workstation out there at the moment. If you want some ideas for new things to try and new techniques, check out my playlist over here of worship mixing tutorials. I walk you through how I set up each instrument with compression and EQ. Now, if this is interesting to you and you think you're gonna try it out, go ahead and type mix bus down in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and ding the little bell. And if you like this video, hit thumbs up and share it with a friend. Remember, it's all about the low end, avoid the sound tech solo, and nobody leaves church humming the kick drum. We'll see you back here next time.